Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar The history of Kurban and the lessons. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome to the Holy Sacrifice Program. In this episode, we are going to learn about the history of Kurban and the lessons. But first, let's have a look at what we've learned so far. In the last episodes, we learned that the meaning of Kurban is sacrifice, to gain nearness and favor. Kurban should be made with the correct intentions. Animals are usually used for kurban, but also personal possessions and produce can be used. History shows that human beings were also used as sacrifices. Islamically, when doing kurban, if your intentions are not correct, then it will be rejected by Allah. Let's look into the history of kurban and start off with the first kurban known to man. This would be the kurban of Abel and his brother Cain. Cain and Abel were to be married. But Cain was jealous over his brother Abel's wife, because she was more beautiful than his wife was. So Cain desired to marry the woman that was meant for Abel. So they both went to our father Adam for a solution, and Adam made a supplication to Allah for assistance. Allah assisted Adam by instructing him to order the two of them. One was a shepherd, and the other was a farmer who had produce. They were ordered to give a charity, a kurban, and the one whose kurban was accepted would be the correct one. One of the ways that Allah accepted a kurban was by sending a fire down to consume the offering. This has been reported in the Christian's Bible and has been confirmed in the Quran, where Allah in Surat Maida, Ayat 27 says, وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ بْنَيْ آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ إِذْ قَرَّبَا قُرْبَانًا فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ قَالَ لَأَقْتُلَنَّكَ قَالَ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Narrate to them in all truth the story of the two sons of Adam. When they made an offering, and it was accepted from one of them, and was not accepted from the other, the latter said, I will surely kill you. Thereupon the former said, Allah accepts offerings only from the God-fearing. Allah's refusal to accept the kurban of one of the two brothers was not due to any wrong the other brother might have committed, but to his own lack of piety. Hence, rather than attempt to kill his brother, he should be concerned with cultivating piety. This reminder shows us that the intention when making kurban should be solely for the sake of Allah and should be from either the best of your wealth or your produce. The one who was a shepherd, Abel, sacrificed a good animal, while his brother Cain sacrificed produce that was almost rotten and not from the good produce which he had. So Allah sent a fire to consume only Abel's kurban while Cain's kurban was left alone. Cain's reaction to kill his brother out of jealousy shows that his intentions were not purely for the pleasure of Allah. Otherwise, he would reflect on his actions and wonder why his kurban was rejected and then try to fix the problem. By having the intention to kill his brother, it would only drive him further away from Allah and cause harm to himself and his own family. Another one of the well-known kurbans in fact, it is the most famous and well-known kurban in the history of mankind, along with the kurban of Cain and Abel, is the kurban of Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ishmael. May Allah grant peace and blessings upon them and their followers. Prophet Ibrahim's kurban is known as the Great Kurban or the Great Sacrifice. In this story of Prophet Ibrahim, we first learned that Prophet Ibrahim and his family was childless and he desired a righteous son. About this, Allah says in his Quran, at Surah As Safat Ayat 100, that Prophet Ibrahim made supplication, saying, Lord, grant me a righteous son. This prayer by itself shows that the Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, at that time was childless. Therefore, 
he naturally desired that Allah should bless him with a righteous child, who could be a source of comfort and consolation for him. Allah answered in response to his prayer in Surah as safat Ayat 101, فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ We gave him the good news of a prudent boy. From this, one should not understand that this good news was given to him immediately following his prayer. In the Quran itself, at another place, this saying of the Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, has been related. All praise be to Allah, who has given me sons like Ishmael and Isaac in my old age. Surah Ibrahim Ayat 39 This proves that there was an interval of many years between the prayer and this good news. The Bible says that at the birth of the prophet Ishmael, the prophet Abraham was 86 years old, Genesis 16.16, and at the birth of the prophet Isaac 100 years, Genesis 21.5. Prophet Abraham dearly loved his son Ishmael, who at that time was his only son and Allah tested him in regards to his devotion. Allah also mentions in Surah as Safat Ayat 102, <laughs> And when he was old enough to go about and work with him, one day Abraham said to him, My son, I see in my dream that I am slaughtering you. So consider and tell me what you think. He said, Do as you are bidden. You will find me, if Allah so wills, among the steadfast. We should note that the prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, had dreamed that he was sacrificing his son and not that he had sacrificed him. Although at that time, he understood the dream to mean that he should sacrifice his son on that very basis. He became ready to sacrifice him with a cool mind. The purpose of asking this of the son was not that he would carry out Allah's command only if he agreed, otherwise not. But the prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, in fact, wanted to find out how righteous, in actual reality, was his child, for whom he had prayed to Allah for. If the son himself was found to be ready to lay down his life for the sake of Allah's approval and pleasure, it would mean that the prayer had been fully granted and the son was not his offspring in the natural way only, but was morally and spiritually also a true son. The words clearly tell that the son had not taken the dream of his prophet father to be a mere dream, but a command from Allah. On this very basis, there is the Islamic belief that the dream of the prophets is never a mere dream. It is also a kind of revelation. One of the actions that highlights the reality of the sincerity, love and devotion to Allah by our Prophet Ibrahim and the love for his only son is that he did not make his son lie flat on his back, but made him lie prostrate, lest, whilst slaughtering him, the sight of his face should arouse compassion and love and make him shaky. Therefore, he wanted to use the knife from under the throat and was about to perform this action in haste. Allah says in Surat as Safat Ayat 103 to 105. <laughs> When both surrendered to Allah's command and Ibrahim flung his son down on his forehead, we cried out, O Abraham, you have indeed fulfilled your dream. Thus do we reward the good doers. When the two had submitted themselves to Allah and Ibrahim had flung his son down on his brow, 
Then we called out, You have fulfilled your dream. We must remember that Allah did not make Ibrahim see in the dream that he actually slaughtered his son and he had died, but that you were slaughtering him. That vision Ibrahim had fulfilled. It was not Allah's will to take the life of Ishmael this way. The actual object of the vision has been fulfilled by Ibrahim's submission and preparation to sacrifice his son for Allah's sake. This is the best example of having one's intention for Kurban purely for the sake of Allah. Allah does not subject the people who adopt the righteous way to trials in order to involve them in trouble, distress and affliction just for the sake of it. But these trials are meant to bring out their excellencies and to exalt them to high ranks. Prophet Ibrahim's willingness and preparation to sacrifice his son was enough to entitle him to be exalted to the rank that could be attained only by the one who would actually have slaughtered his son for Allah's approval and pleasure. Thus, Allah saved the life of his child as well as exalted Prophet Ibrahim to this high rank. This was indeed a great kurban, as Allah mentions in his noble Quran in Surat as Safat Ayat 107-111. وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ كَذَلِكَ نَجِزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And we ransomed him with a mighty sacrifice, and we preserved for him a good name among posterity. Peace be upon Abraham. Thus do we reward the good doers. Surely he was one of our believing servants. A great sacrifice, a ram, as mentioned in the Bible and the Islamic traditions, that Allah's angel presented at the time before the prophet, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, so that he should sacrifice it instead of his son. This has been called a great sacrifice because it was to serve as a ransom from a faithful servant like Ibrahim for a patient and obedient son like Ishmael, and Allah made it a means of fulfilling the intention of an unprecedented kurban. Another reason for calling it a great kurban or a great sacrifice is that Allah made it a tradition till the day of resurrection that all the believers should offer animal sacrifice on the same date in the entire world, so as to keep fresh the memory of the great and unique event, signifying faithfulness and devotion. Allah has honoured Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, from that time up until the last day and beyond. Not only is Prophet Ibrahim remembered, honoured and respected in all the major faiths, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, but he is mentioned in every prayer the Muslim performs, invoking peace and blessing upon him, his family and followers. This is mentioned at least 17 times a day by each and every Muslim around the world non-stop. Truly, this is an honour beyond words. Our noble prophet Ibrahim, peace and blessing be upon him, his family and true followers. Many noteworthy kurbans have taken place throughout history, and even though every kurban is special, we are highlighting particularly unique ones to help educate and remind ourselves of the importance of this ritual for our well-being, to give the animal their rights upon us, and to correct and have the right intentions, as intentions is one of the main, if not the main, factor. In the times of the pharaohs in Egypt, particularly the twelve tribes of Israel, who derived from the twelve sons of prophet Jacob, known also by Jacob, each of his sons being the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. Prophet Jacob, who is the son of Prophet Isaac, who is the son of Prophet Ibrahim. Prophet Musa, also known as Moses, peace be upon him, was from one of the twelve tribes of Israel and experienced many hardships with his followers he was placed over. In the times of the pharaohs in Egypt, people were accustomed to animal worship. The cult of cow worship was widespread among Israel's neighbours. It was particularly common in Egypt and Canaan. After the time of Prophet Yusuf, 
also known as Joseph, when the Israelites fell prey to degeneracy and became the slaves of the Copts, they were contaminated by many of the corrupt practices prevalent among their rulers. Cow worship was one of them. They made images out of them, which are still visible today in preserved tombs and museums in Egypt. These cows were and still are venerated in many cultures as symbols of motherhood and nourishment because they care for their calves and provide humans with milk. Unfortunately, many from the children of Israel adopted the ways and ideology of animal worship and superstition. One particular incident, which is well known, but had dire consequences and was performed in the prophet Musa's absence and without his permission, many from the community had the wrong intentions and were misguided. This was the worshipping of the calf in prophet Musa's absence. They made a calf out of the gold that they had with them, and they started worshipping and making sacrifices to the calf. When Prophet Musa returned from his journey, his people were ordered to kill themselves, meaning the ones who didn't participate must kill the ones who participated in order for them to be forgiven. Allah mentions this in Surah Baqarah, Ayat 54, where he says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّخَاذِكُمُ الْعِجَلَ فَتُوبُوا فَتُوبُوا إِلَىٰ بَارِئِكُمْ فَاقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ And recall when Moses said to his people, My people, you have wronged yourselves by making the calf for an object of worship, so turn in your repentance to your Creator and kill yourselves. This will be best for you in your Creator's sight. Thereupon, he accepted your repentance. Indeed, he is much relenting, most compassionate. As Muslims, we now know that one of the major sins in Islam, which will not be forgiven, is associating partners with Allah. The laws of the Torah, which is the message that Prophet Musa came with, is different from the laws of the Quran, which our Prophet Muhammad came with. So this form of killing each other or sacrificing is clearly forbidden and not allowed in any shape, form, or fashion. Another kurban, which was made in the time of Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, was when a murder was committed in the community, which caused contention, and the people started to remonstrate. To solve the matter, even though Allah and their messenger Moses were present to resolve the matter, Prophet Moses gave the command by Allah's leave that they should slaughter a cow for Allah to reveal the victim's situation. The wisdom in Allah ordering the slaughtering of the cow was because their hearts were still inclined towards those fake rituals and that culture. Allah says about this in Sarah al-Baqarah ayat 67-64 to وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً قالوا اتتخذنا هزوا قال اعوذ بالله ان اكون من الجاهلين قالوا ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما هي قال انه يقول انها بقره لا فارض ولا بكر عوان بين ذلك فافعلوا ما تؤمرون قالوا ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما لونها قال انه يقول انها بقره صفراء فاقع لونها تسر الناظرين قالوا ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما هي ان البقره شابه علينا وانا ان شاء الله لمهتدون قال انه يقول 
انها بقرة لا ذلول تثير الارض ولا تسقي الحرث مسلمة لا شية فيها قالوا الان جئت بالحق فذبحوها وما كادوا يفعلون وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَادَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ فَقُلْنَا اضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ ثم قست قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهي كالحجارة أو أشد قسوة وإن من الحجارة لما يتفجر منه الأنهار وإن منها لما يشقق فيخرج منه الماء وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And then recall when Moses said to his people, Behold, Allah commands you to slaughter a cow. They said, Are you jesting with us? Moses answered, I seek refuge in Allah that I should behave in the manner of the ignorant. They said, Pray to your Lord that he make clear to us what she is like. Moses answered, He says she is a cow, neither old nor immature, but of an age in between the two. Do then what you have been commanded. They said, Pray to your Lord that he makes it clear to us of what colour she is. Moses answered, He says she is a yellow cow with a bright colour which is pleasing to those who see. They said, Pray to your Lord that he make clear to us what cow she is. Cows seem much alike to us, and if Allah wills, we shall be guided. Moses answered, Lo, he says, she is a cow unyoked to plough the earth or to water the tillage, one that has been kept secure with no blemish on her. Thereupon they crowd out, Now you have come forth with the information that will direct us aright. And they slaughtered her, although they scarcely seemed to do so. And recall when you killed a man and then began to remonstrate and cast the blame of killing upon one another, even though Allah was determined to bring to light what you were hiding. Then we ordered, Smite the corpse with a part of it. Thus does Allah bring the dead to life, and thus does he show his signs that you might understand. Then, Even after observing this, your hearts hardened and became like stones, or even harder. For surely there are some stones from which streams burst forth, and some that split asunder, and water issues out, and some that crash down for fear of Allah. Allah is not heedless of the things you do. This has been an intense lesson about the history of Kurban. We learned a lot about lessons the previous prophets and their followers went through, and the kurbans they made. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.